appreciate you joining and we're looking forward to the conversation. We're just gonna give it a few minutes for people to join the webinar. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get it started in just a moment. We're just going to give it a minute for folks to join in the room, and we'll get started in just a moment. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us and for joining us for this Getting Back on Track Help is Here webinar with the Small Business Administration and the Public Private Strategies Institute. Uh, just a few things for housekeeping here. If you've got a question, please type it into the Q&A box. Uh, and also, please do not share any personal information in the Q&A or in the chat. Today, we're going to be focusing on uh, the Pacific region of the Small Business Administration, which is, covers Arizona, California, Guam, Hawaii, and Nevada. Uh, this is, of course, open to all of the states uh, in our country, but we are focusing today uh, and we'll have folks joining us from this region. I'm now going to turn the program over to my colleague, Renee. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have you all here. As you know, this is the Getting Back on Track webinar series with the Small Business Administration and Public Private Strategies. Uh, this is just one webinar in a series uh, that we've been conducting since May, and we're happy to be in the Pacific region today. Uh, we are going to hear from a uh, Small Business Administration official, uh, and more specifically, we're going to talk about some of the resources that you guys can um, connect with at the Small Business Administration, as well as learn about vaccinations and how to take your uh, business is digital. Um, next slide, please. So first, why we're here today is because businesses needed financial resources. Nine in 10 firms fought some, fought, sought, excuse me, some type of emergency funding to help meet financing challenges during the pandemic. And 82% sought some sort of PPP loan. And more specifically, Congress passed several laws, including the American Rescue Plan, which is also known as ARP, CARES Act, and focused on helping small businesses and consumers. Next slide, please. With that said, we're going to talk about those three things, particularly that I mentioned earlier. We're going to talk about relief options available for your businesses that you can uh, look through and find. You're going to also talk about vaccinations and getting back to business and updates from the CDC. And then lastly, we're going to talk about digital resources to sustain and grow your business beyond the pandemic. Next slide, please. Now I'm really excited to introduce to you Don Golick. She's the District Director of Fresno Pacific Region. Um, and basically, she is one of the most amazing people uh, we've ever met. She is a successful, she's had a successful career in municipal government and nonprofit administration. Uh, Don Golick's federal tenure began in 1999 when she was selected as a community builder fellow under a joint fellowship program between the United States Department, Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. After completing a two-year community builder fellowship, Don was hired by HUD and spent the next 11 years in the Fresno Field Office, leading housing, community, and economic development initiatives across the San 
Quan Valley. She was the 2008 HUD Employee of the Year for the region and left HUD in 2011 as the acting director of the Fresno HUD office to become the chief of public affairs for Veteran Administration, Central California Healthcare System. Um, she now is the US Small Business Administration um, as the deputy director of Fresno um, District. She manages the SBA's leading government contracting and community outreach initiatives for 15 years, um, or excuse me, for 15 counties. Uh, and since September of 2016, she has also served as SBA's Acting Communications Director for Region 9. So super excited to welcome Don to today's webinar. Don? Well, thank you so much, Renee, and the team at Public Private Strategies. I'm so happy to be with you here today to talk about SBA programs. I know that many of you are joining from the West Coast, and we're glad that you could be here. But for those of you who are joining us today from another part of the country, welcome, and we're glad that you're here too. And I hope that the information that you hear today, and particularly the information about how to connect with the SBA in your community is helpful for you. We'll go to the next slide. So as Renee mentioned at the top of the presentation, millions of small businesses were able to access assistance through the Paycheck Protection Program, both through a first draw loan or through a first and a second draw PPP loan. And we know that many of you are eager to now get that PPP loan forgiven. So I wanna talk briefly about how to do that. But along with everything else I'm gonna tell you today, I want you to leave with this. You are not alone to figure out any of the things that we're talking to you about during this presentation. There's help available to you through the SBA district offices, both here on the West Coast and around the country. And I'm gonna show you how to get in touch with them. There's also assistance available to you through SBA's network of trusted resource partner agencies. And I'll tell you how to get in touch with them. So whether you need help with your Paycheck Protection Program loan forgiveness or anything else, it's available to you. So for businesses that have completed their covered period of using their Paycheck Protection Program loan, you can apply for forgiveness. Now you're gonna wanna take the lead on how to do that from your lender. And so working with your lender, they will be able to advise you both when to submit your PPP forgiveness application, as well as which one to submit, depending on the size of your PPP loan and how you used your funds, there are different forgiveness applications for different situations. And so your lender would be able to guide you and advise you on how to do that. After you've completed the form, you're gonna to wanna to assemble your documentation. Now, depending on how much of a PPP loan you received and what you used it for, you may not have to provide that when you submit your loan forgiveness application, but you do need to have it available in case the SBA or your lender needs to review it. And your documentation would include things like how you used your loan, your payroll records, if you may have spent some of it on rent, utilities, or other allowable PPP expenses, this is the kind of documentation that you'll want to assemble and keep in case you need it. Once you've put all of that information together, you're gonna to submit your forgiveness form and any needed documentation directly to your lender. Now our lenders are generally using an online platform to do that. And again, they'll be able to provide you guidance on how to access that platform and when you should submit your application. I do wanna note that businesses who received Paycheck Protection Program loans have until 10 months after the end of their covered period before they're required to submit their forgiveness application. And again, your covered period could be as short as eight weeks or as long as 24 weeks, depending on how you chose to use your money. So many businesses may not need to submit their loan forgiveness for several more months. Once you've submitted your loan forgiveness application, your lender will have a period of 60 days to review it, and then they'll submit it to the SBA who has an additional time period where they'll review the documentation that you may have provided, your loan forgiveness application, and review the decision that your lender made on loan forgiveness. If you've already submitted it and you need a status update, your lender would be the place to go for that. 
I also want to note that, again, you're not alone to figure any of this out. There's a lot of great information on the sba.gov forward slash PPP website. If you want to look at the forms, if you need assistance on how to fill out or complete them, or if you're still currently using your PPP funds and want to make sure that you're doing that correctly, the sba.gov forward slash PPP website is a great resource to help you do that. And we'll go to the next slide. So in addition to the PPP program, the SBA also has a variety of other funding programs that are available to assist small businesses with a variety of needs. We have additional loans, which I'll be discussing, that can provide you access to capital that you can use as a small business owner, both to help reopen or recover your business, to grow the business, or even for startup if you're somebody who's thinking about starting a new small business. Some businesses are interested in investment capital to grow their companies, either debt or equity. And although the SBA does not make investments directly in small businesses, we do support that through our network of small business investment companies. And we'll talk about that. I wanna to touch briefly on disaster relief. I know that for many small businesses, both here in California or around the country, you may have been affected by recent natural disasters. We've had those here in California with the fires. I know we've had Hurricane Louisiana and flooding, uh, Hurricane Laura and flooding in Kentucky and Louisiana. So if you're a small business that may have been impacted by a natural disaster, there is disaster relief available through the SBA and we'll touch on that today. I also wanna talk about SBA's surety bonding program. For businesses that work on contracts, either public or private, you may need to provide bonding in order to do that. And we'll discuss SBA assistance available to you if you need help with bonding. And then lastly, we're gonna to touch a little bit on grants, particularly for businesses that are working in research, development, or innovation. The SBA may have grant assistance available to you to help support you with that. We'll go to the next slide. So SBA makes loans through three primary programs. Now, while we don't make loans directly, we provide guarantees that participating SBA lenders, which can include banks, credit unions, and other lending institutions can use to make loans directly to small businesses. If you're not a business that currently has a business banking relationship, that's okay. And I'm gonna show you a little later today how you can connect with a lender who may be able to provide a loan to you. So the three primary SBA loan programs are 7A, 504, and our microloans. The 7A program provides a variety of loans and that can be used for a variety of purposes by small businesses. Maybe you need assistance with starting up or scaling up. Perhaps you need some working capital or a line of credit. These are all things that can be uh, done under the SBA 7A loan program. Um, and we have lenders who are available to work with you if you might be interested in some of that funding. And again, later today, we'll tell you how to connect with them. Some businesses may be ready to make a big investment in their company. Perhaps they need to buy or replace an expensive piece of equipment, or maybe they're interested in purchasing some commercial real estate. If you're a small business that needs to make one of those big ticket purchases, the SBA's 504 loan program is a great fit for you. These are loans that are made by certified development companies, and they can help you get the low interest and long-term financing at a fixed rate that can make those big purchases affordable. And then lastly would be the SBA microloans. While some businesses need a big amount of funding, not every business needs a million dollar loan. And so if you're a small business that needs just a little bit of capital, that could make a big difference in your company, the SBA microloans could be a great fit for you. These are funds that are provided through a network of community-based and nonprofit lenders up to $50,000. And the great thing about them is that in addition to getting the loan, they also will provide you technical assistance to help you continue to grow your business. We'll go to the next slide. So I mentioned a moment ago about how to connect with a lender if you might be a small business that doesn't currently have a lender relationship. 
the SBA has an online platform called Lender Match. You can find it on our website at sba.gov forward slash lender match. And it's a fantastic way for busy small business owners to quickly and easily connect with small business lenders that can help you. When you go on Lender Match, you'll be asked to provide some information about your business, what you do, how much funding you need, what you can do with the funding to grow your company. You'll be asked for additional details about your business. And then after you submit all of this, lenders who accept referrals from Lender Match will have an opportunity to review the information that you've provided and respond within 48 hours if they may be able to assist you in connecting to provide you with a small business loan. Once you receive the referrals back from Lender Match, you can review those, you can decide which lenders you may want to reach out to and have further conversations with about their loan programs and how they might be able to support you. And then if you find one that's a good fit, you can apply for a small business administration loan directly through them. And the Lender Match program also will submit loan requests to the community development financial institutions and smaller lenders that are able to make microloans. So no matter what size of a loan that you need, Lender Match can be a good way for you to connect with a lender who can help you. And we'll go to the next slide. So as I mentioned a moment ago, we know that there are businesses here in California, across the West Coast and around the country that may have recently been impacted by natural disasters and need assistance through SBA's disaster relief programs. These are available to small businesses, small agricultural cooperatives, and many nonprofit organizations. If you need assistance from these programs, they can be used to provide you with working capital and funding that can support your ongoing and normal expenses. And there's more information available on the sba.gov webpage, including you can go on and search for disaster declarations by state and by county to find out if there may be disaster relief assistance available in your community. We'll go to the next slide. So I mentioned earlier that sometimes small businesses are not interested in a loan, but they may be interested in either debt or equity investment in their company. So again, while the SBA does not make these kinds of investments in small businesses, we do support access to that sort of capital through the SBA's network of small business investment companies or SBICs. These are companies that are licensed by the SBA and provide a combination of their own funds as well as funding that's guaranteed by the SBA to be able to make debt and equity investments in small businesses. Now, if you're a small business watching today and you think this is something you might be interested in, you can go on the sba.gov website to find an SBIC in your state or to look for SBICs that have expertise in certain sectors or industries. I also want to note that if you are a small business that might be interested in becoming an SBIC, you can also find information about how to do that on the sba.gov website. We'll go to the next slide. So I mentioned earlier that SBA has a surety bonding program for businesses that work on contracts. Many private and government contracts, either federal, state, or even local, may require you as a small business to provide either a bid, a performance, or a payment bond in order to get the contract. Some businesses may not have any bonding capacity. Other businesses may have some bonding capacity, but they need to expand that in order to bid on bigger and larger jobs. And this is where the SBA surety bonding program comes into play and can help you. Using the SBA surety bonds, a business is able to obtain or grow the bonding capacity they need in order to get the bonding that's required to bid on contracts. So if you're a small business and you need help with bonding, you can go on the sba.gov website to find bonding, uh, SBA approved bonding agencies near you that you can work with. And additionally, if you are a bonding company and you might be interested in becoming SBA approved to do surety bonds through the SBA, you can also find information on how to do that there. We'll go to the next slide. So we have a fantastic history in this company, in this country of small businesses that do incredible things in innovation. And so if you are one of our inventors or tinkerers here, 
watching the presentation, I want you to know that the SBA may have assistance available for you to support access to early stage capital for research and development through the Small Business Investment Research Program and the Small Business Technology Transfer Program. Both of these provide critical early stage funding to help small businesses complete the research that may have tremendous potential for commercialization and also that supports national research goals. You can go on the sbir.gov website if you need more information about this or want to find out more about how these programs may be able to assist and support you with your research and development. Next slide. So for businesses that may be local and want to know how to go global, the SBA has programs to help with that as well. Exporting is a wonderful opportunity for small businesses. 96% of the consumers in the world are actually outside the United States, and two-thirds of the world's purchasing power is outside of the United States. So learning how to make your customers global and sell overseas is a fantastic opportunity for you as a small business owner. And SBA has programs that can help you do that. Through our sba.gov forward slash trade tools website, you can get access to export intelligence that can help you stay competitive. Whether you need to put together an exporting plan, you need help resolving trade issues, or you're looking for help with finding a global marketplace or a country to sell your goods or services in, those are all available to you on the sba.gov forward slash trade tools webpage. If you find a, a country that you're interested in selling to, but you need help finding overseas buyers, the SBA also makes assistance available for that as well. Through a network of states around the country, the SBA provides grants to them that they in turn can provide to small businesses to help you find overseas customers and connect with them. And you can find out if your state or territory is participating in this program on the sba.gov forward slash step webpage. And then lastly, the SBA provides financing tools, our international trade uh, financing programs that you can use to extend very advantageous and attractive financing terms to overseas customers if you're ready to close a deal. And again, like everything else, you're not alone to figure any of this out. The Small Business Administration has a network of export finance managers working across the country that can help you work through how to set up terms for one of these overseas deals and use SBA export programs to extend those to your customers. All of this is available through our SBA export finance managers, and you can find them at sba.gov forward slash international. I want to also pause and note that for some of our SBA district offices across the country, they have staff that are co-located with both the United States Department of Commerce, as well as Export Import Bank of the United States. And having all of those federal agencies under one roof to assist you really brings the full weight of federal government export overseas trade programs to you to help you close those deals and be able to do exporting and sell your goods and services around the world. We'll go to the next slide. So if you're interested in going global, you absolutely need to go digital as well. And SBA through our state trade export program or STEP has assistance that can help you do that. If you need to translate your marketing materials into other languages, you need to improve or translate your web page, you need help with consultant services to connect with your overseas buyers. These are all the kinds of services that you can receive assistance with through your local state or territory that receives an SBA step grant. And again, you can find that at sba.gov forward slash step. We'll go to the next slide. So now I wanna talk about federal contracting. The United States government is the biggest buyer of goods and services in the world, annually purchasing over half a tr trillion dollars in goods and services and awarding over $150 billion a year in federal prime contracts to small businesses. 
So learning how to make the federal government your customer is a terrific way to grow your business and the SBA can help you do that. There's a lot of great information on the sba.gov forward slash contracting website. And we'll go to the next slide and I'll talk a little bit about a couple of programs that can be of particular assistance to you. The SBA has four key programs that small businesses can use to get a real edge over their competition in the federal government arena. The first one is the 8A Business Development Program. This is a nine-year certification that SBA awards to socially and economically disadvantaged small businesses. It gives you access to both set-aside uh, contracts as well as direct award contracts. Additionally, if you are in the 8A program, you'll be assigned a business opportunity specialist in the SBA district office near you. You'll have access to training, marketing, and other assistance that can help you grow your company. And it's a fantastic way to get an edge over your competition in the federal government marketplace. For businesses that are located in historically underutilized business zones or hub zones, which are geographically targeted areas around the country that don't traditionally do a lot of government contracting, you can apply to the SBA for hub zone certification. You need to have your primary uh, location in a hub zone certified area, and at least 35% or more of your employees also need to be located and living in the hub zone, although not necessarily the same one that your business is in. You can do hub zone work around the country, and hub zone certified firms have a 10% bidding advantage when it comes to bidding on federal work. For our women-owned small businesses, for all of the women watching today, if your small business is 51% 51 or more owned by women business uh, owners who are the prime decision makers and take care of the day-to-day -day operations of the business, you really should consider getting your women-owned small business certification. Again, it's another way to have access to uh, federal contracts, both set aside and direct award contracts. The SBA also has an economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business certification. And then lastly, for any veterans that are watching, for veteran-owned small businesses, the SBA has assistance to help you get your service-disabled veteran-owned certification. You can find more information on all of these programs on the certify.sba.gov webpage. What is great about that is that it allows you to go on, answer a few questions about your business, and find out which of these certifications you may be eligible for. And I also want to note that you can have all of these certifications. Any that you're eligible for, you can obtain and you can use to bid on federal government programs. Some businesses are able to leverage multiple certifications to really grow their business with the government contracting. Let's look at the next slide. So like I said at the top of the presentation today, no matter what it is that you need help with for your small business, you are not alone. You've got assistance available to you through the SBA district offices, and I'll tell you in a moment how to find out who that is closest to you, but you also have assistance through a national network of SBA approved resource partner agencies. These are trusted and vetted organizations that work closely with the SBA to provide free consulting, counseling, technical assistance, and training to our country's 31 million small businesses. Through our network of veteran business outreach centers, the SBA is able to help veteran-owned small businesses, veterans, and also the spouses of veterans with technical assistance and training that you need to learn how to start a business, to grow a business, to get your disabled veteran-owned small business certification, and also to help you with assistance if you want to put together a business plan to apply for financing. The SBA also teaches across a network of military installations around the country, the Boots to Business Training, which is an intensive two-day class to help service members learn the skills that they need to become successful business owners when they leave the military. SBA also has a network of SCORE chapters around the country. These are nonprofit organizations that have volunteers who have many years of business experience and who are able to leverage that to become your mentor. So 
So whether you need help starting a business, putting together a business plan, developing a market plan, or anything else related to the operations and growth of your business, SCORE can assign you an experienced mentor that's there with you every step of the way to help you do that. And there's no cost for that. I also wanna mention our women's business centers. They're located around the country and they provide free technical assistance, training and support to women and men who want to start up or scale up their small business. Again, the assistance is free and they're there to help you. And then lastly, the SBA also works with a network of small business development centers. These are nonprofits or in some cases located at universities around the country. There's no charge for their help and they will assign you a free consultant. They provide extensive technical assistance, training and support, again, to help small businesses start up, scale up and succeed. They're doing a lot of webinars, training, technical assistance and working directly with small business owners and they're fantastic resources. Let's look at the next slide. So in addition to the organizations that I just mentioned, the SBA has also come out with a new program, the Community Navigator Pilot Program. And this will help community-based organizations connect small businesses with our partner organizations and SBA. There's some great information right now on the SBA webpage. If your organization might be interested in applying for a Community Navigator Pilot Program grant, the SBA is looking for organizations to help connect us and our resource partners with small businesses. And the Community Navigator Pilot Program is that important point, connection point between all of that. Let's go to the next slide. And I think I'll hand it off to Renee at this point. Thanks, Dawn. Well, private sector support. In addition to the programs at the Small Business Administration, there are many uh, companies that offer grants and other forms of capital to small businesses at this time. There are easy online searches that you can use to find major companies who provide support to small businesses. So just easily go to one of the, the search bars uh, that you use and type in something like grants for small businesses and you'll be able to find hundreds if not thousands. But be mindful, there might be some sort of criteria you may to use to apply um, and be very careful um, that some might be predatory and some may be some scams. So just do your due diligence and some research before applying. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Also state and local government programs exist as well. Many states and local governments have created grant programs for businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19. Check out your state and local office economic development and Department of Commerce to see what might be available for your businesses. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna talk about the role of vaccines and getting back to business, as well as an update from the CDC. Next slide. Small business owners and the COVID-19 vaccines, right? So we're talking about the majority of small business owner employers say that it's very important for their employees to get vaccinated. Um, more than half of their small, small employers say their workers are turning to them with questions. More than 80% of small business employers reporting having informal conversations with their workers about vaccines. Next slide, please. More than half of small business employers in the survey um, have had formal conversations, including staff meetings and one-on-one -on -one with employees. Small employers are engaging their workers on vaccines as well as their families and communities because they're usually considered the most trusted source. Small business owners are taking action and leaders by getting vaccinated and helping others to become vaccinated as well. Next slide, please. And as most of you remember, on February 26th, so sorry, the Biden-Harris administration issued a call to action to the private sector asking businesses to one, adopt a mass policy, two, amplify the importance and safety of vaccinations, and then three, establish a vaccination plan for their employees. Next slide, please. So how are you able to get back to business, right? Well, one, you want to allow we wanna allow you to operate at full capacity, uh, bring back customers for your community and then reduce staffing issue caused by COVID-19 exposure and infections. Next slide, please. Getting up to speed on the vaccines. 
uh, is very important because you want to be able to make sure that if you choose to create a vaccine policy, that you are taking the steps to take the resources that you need to support um, the employees and everyone has the a right information. You want to educate yourself, your employees on the safety and efficiency of the vaccine and why is it important that you all receive it. This, is, this will help you explain the benefits of taking the vaccine abundantly and why they outweigh the risk of not taking a vaccination. Next slide, please. Creating a COVID-19 plan is very, very important, regardless of the size of your business, whether you're big or small, you need a plan. Uh, you should first definitely review state and local vaccination policies or seek legal advice. Uh, consider incentives. Uh, there's new paid leave tax credits uh, that's available. So if you wanted to uh, allow your employees to get their shots or recover the, from side effects, if any shall occur, they're able to uh, do so and you're able to receive a tax credit. Next slide, please. There are also some um, opportunities uh, for you to find uh, where to register for vaccination. So keep your employees appraised of updates on vaccine eligibility and where to register. You could use Vaccine Finder. Uh, if you live in an area disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, the Health Re Resources and uh, Service Administration has a program that can provide greater assistance. And whether you encourage or incentivize or mandate vaccines, communicate the plan with your employees, both verbally and in writing. You want to make sure you do both so that they are able to uh, be reinsured of what your, what your choices are. Uh, continue to follow the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, guidance on wearing a mask and social distancing, even after all of your employees are vaccinated. And then again, check out the uh, resources for the Center for Disease Control and Preve Prevention Vaccination Toolkits. And then also there's a campaign uh, through the Department of Health and Human Services called We Can Do This and go to wecandothis.hhs.gov. Now, going back to the tax credit idea, if you decide to move forward with that as an option, the American Rescue Plan of 2021 allows small and mid-sized employers and certain government employers to claim refundable tax credits uh, that reimburse them for the cost of providing paid sick and family leave to their employees due to COVID-19, including taking leave by employees to receive or recover from COVID-19 uh, vaccinations. Now, the ARP tax credits are available to eligible employers that pay sick and family leave for from April 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2021. Um, this is one of your options. Um, and we always want to make sure that before you decide to do this, that you definitely consult your tax professional in order to take advantage of these valuable credits um, if you are a business and to make sure that you're eligible as well. Next slide, please. So the ERTC, the Employee Retention Tax Credit. Uh, the Employee Retention Tax Credit is a refundable credit that businesses can claim on qualified wages, including certain health costs, insurance costs paid to employees. So what is the ERTC? So different iterations uh, of, of legislation improved upon the eligibility. So with the CARES Act, employers who qualify, including borrowers who took a loan under the initial PPP, their credit can be claimed against 50% of qualified wages paid, up to 10,000 per employee annually for wages paid between March 13th, 2020 and December 31st, 2020. And again, that was the first CARES Act when the pandemic first happened. Then the Consolidated Appropriations Act, uh, which then came in 2021 at the beginning of this year, uh, when employers who qualify, including PPP recipients, can claim a credit against 70% of qualified wages paid. Additionally, the amount of wages that qualifies for the new credit is now 10,000 per employee per quarter for the first two quarters of 2021. Again, this is 2021. American Rescue Plan Act 2021 now states that the credit remains at 70% of qualified wages of up to 10,000 per limit, limit per quarter, so a maximum of 7,000 per employee per quarter for all of 2021. So an employer could claim 7,000 per quarter 
per employee or up to 28,000 for 2021. However, under this law, certain startup businesses, those started after February 15th, 2020, right, were forced to shut down due to government order may be allowed a credit of up to 50,000 per quarter. Now, I know this is confusing and that's why we suggest that if you uh, check in with your tax uh, preparer before making a decision, uh, because this can become a little complicated. Next slide, please. So who qualifies uh, for the CARES? Generally, if gross receipts in a calendar quarter are below 50% of gross receipts when compared to the same calendar quarter in 2019, an employer would qualify. Uh, they are no longer eligible if in the calendar quarter immediately following the quarter gross receipts exceed 80% compared to the same calendar quarter in 2019. Um, under the 2021 Consolidated Appropriations Act, um, beginning in 2021, businesses must be impacted by forced closures. So whether, you know, it was a federal or your state forced a closure of quarantines or have seen more than 20% um, drop of gross receipts in quarter compared to the same quarter in 2019. So again, if you were not in business in 2019, then you cannot compare, of course, those gross receipts. Uh, if you are a new business, the IRS allows you to use the gross receipts for the quarter in which you started your business as a reference for any quarter which they do not have 2019 figures because, of course, you were not in business yet. Uh, the American Rescue Plan, the 2021, right, in addition to eligibility requirements under the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, Businesses also have the options of determining eligibility based on gross receipts in the immediately preceding calendar quarter compared with the corresponding quarter in 2019. And again, I just always like to stress, if that sounds confusing to you, you you're not alone. Make sure you, of course, consult your tax consultant. Next slide, please. And of course, to learn more about tax credits, you can go to the irs.gov newsroom and FAQs to learn more about the tax credits. And of course, I cannot stress enough, consult your tax professional in order to take advantage of these valuable credits and to make sure your business is eligible to do so. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk about digital resources to sustain and grow beyond the pandemic. So a recent McKinsey survey found that small business owners are now three times more likely than before the crisis to say that at least 80% of their customer interactions are digital in nature. The pandemic created a need and opportunity to move to digital capabilities and more businesses are utilizing web presence for awareness, e-commerce capabilities, and digital fulfillment, which also uh, means no touch uh, where possible. Next slide, please. And people are moving their businesses digital. And we want to make sure you have that ability to do so. So if you are assessing whether you have fully implemented a digital resource, ask yourself the following questions. Do you have a website? Do you have ways to receive payments digitally? Can you do no contract transaction fulfillment? If you can answer yes to all that, then you are definitely moving in the right direction to moving your business digitally. If not, there are definitely ways that you can do so. And you, you need to make sure that you're doing to moving forward with going digitally for your business. Next slide, please. I'm now excited to bring back Dawn because I would love for her to talk more about what's happening in the amazing Pacific region. Yes, thank you, Renee. Well, I want to say on behalf of my colleagues and I from the SBA district offices across the Pacific region, California, Nevada, Arizona, Hawaii, Guam, American Samoa, and the Northern Marianas Islands. Again, we're so glad that all of the small businesses could join us today, and you are not alone to help. You can reach out to the SBA district office nearest you. You can see here on the screen a list of their email addresses and phone numbers. You can also go on the sba.gov webpage and click on the local assistance tab. When you do that, you can enter your zip code and you can find a list of the resource partners, the district offices, and other SBA services that are nearest you. 
I want to note that many of our district offices are doing a wide variety of online training, webinars, and other virtual assistance to reach small businesses right now. So if you don't currently get those bulletins from the SBA district office nearest you, you should contact the one near you, ask to be put on their mailing list, because I know all of my colleagues and I have been very busy providing extensive training and technical assistance and support to small businesses to help them with a variety of things. You can also follow each of the SBA district offices via Twitter. All of the district offices have a Twitter account. It's a fantastic way to find out about training or events that they're doing near you and in your area. And again, if you're not from the West Coast, you're, that's okay. You can still find an SBA district office near you. We have 68 around the country. There's at least one SBA office in each state and they have staff that are trained and available to assist you. I wanna also pause for a moment because I know that we have businesses that may be joining us today who prefer to do business or connect with SBA in a language other than English. The SBA, in addition to our sba.gov webpage, also has an sba.gov forward slash Espanol webpage, fully translated into Spanish. Additionally, the SBA has made important information on our programs, services, and initiatives for small businesses available in over 30 languages. You can go on the SBA webpage and you can find those uh, flyers, those resource information materials, and a variety of other information that you can use for your small business. Even if you don't uh, connect with the SBA in English, the SBA can still connect with you through the widely translated materials that we have available on our webpage. Additionally, the SBA also has our answer desk, which I think we're going to show the information for here in a moment. So if you need to connect with the SBA in American Sign Language, we do have online through a video phone system set up with headquarters for businesses that need to use ASL translation that is also available to them. So we're here to assist you, we're here to support you, and my colleagues and I, both here in the Pacific region as well as around the country, stand with our 31 million small businesses around the country to be available to serve and assist you. Wow, Don, thanks. I'm excited to uh, do some questions for you um, because I know more people wanna know about regional and district offices. Um, are district offices available for people to walk in now? Well, that's a great question. You know, right now, many of our district offices are continuing to do work remotely. So we would advise you, you need to connect with the district office. They are fully available to you via phone and online. So either for the offices here in the Pacific region or for any of our other 68 district offices around the country, if you go on the sba.gov website, you can click on that local assistance tab, which is in the top right corner, put in your zip code, and it will populate with all of the SBA resource partners and the SBA district office closest to you. You can call them, you can email them and find out how to connect with them and how they can assist you. Wow, thank you. Um, how can district offices help me with my small business issues? Well, that's a great question. Uh, SBA offices provide support to small businesses across a wide array of SBA programs and services. So if you have a question about a particular program or SBA service, you can contact the district office nearest you. We can help you over the phone, or if you need more in-depth assistance, if you need a mentor or you need a counselor or you need someone to provide you really hands-on technical assistance, we can help you connect with one of our resource partner agencies that is available to serve you. And again, these are these very trusted, vetted organizations that partner and work very closely with the SBA to help our country's small businesses. Can a district office assist me with completing my application for loans through a bank? So what we would probably do, depending on specifically what the business needs, is help them connect with Lender Match so that they can find a lender. If they need assistance with a business plan, we could help connect the business with one of our resource partner agencies 
that can help them prepare and put together an excellent business plan. And then they would have the information they need to confidently work with a lender and submit and prepare their application with the support of the lender and the resource partner and help from SBA. Wow, thank you. Um, is technical assistance provided? We do provide technical assistance in a variety of different ways. So again, many of our district offices are doing a tremendous number of webinars, uh, teletown halls, and providing other training and technical assistance sessions for small businesses. Whether you have questions on Paycheck Protection Program forgiveness, or you've got questions on other SBA programs, you can find technical assistance through the district offices. We also have staff with very deep subject matter expertise in our district. So if perhaps you're interested in finding out more about the 8A program or your small business wants to export or you're a veteran and you wanna learn more about how to use your uh, veteran small business certification. These are all kinds of technical assistance issues that our staff in our district offices can support small businesses with. Wow. Uh, can you, I, I know you you brought up some training programs. Can you describe some of the training programs provided by uh, the district offices? Yeah, so we do, again, a lot of webinars and online training for small businesses in a variety of areas. For access to capital, we help businesses learn how to find a lender. We talk about the different SBA loan programs, which I discussed a little bit today help businesses figure out which one might be the best fit for them. We touch on some of the things that an SBA lender will look at and consider if a small business goes to them for funding or to apply for a loan. The SBA also does, again, extensive training on our government contracting program. So if you want to find out more about the 8A program, Women in Small Business Certification, Hub Zone, how to bid on government projects, these are all topics that SBA offices around the country provide free training and workshops on. Wow, and last question before we go to Congresswoman Chu. What are, some, what are SCORE centers, SBCs, and women's small business centers, and how do they connect with the SBA? Yeah, that's a great question, Renee. So th those organizations are partners with the SBA. And through our partnership with them, they are able to provide free technical assistance, training, consulting, counseling, and mentoring to help small businesses start up, scale up, and succeed. And what I think is wonderful about our resource partners is that the people that work with them that provide that to small businesses have such a wealth of experience. So no matter how specific the need or what industry a small business may be in, I'm confident that they would be able to find a counselor, mentor, or consultant through one of our resource partner agencies that can assist them with that. Wow, Don, you have given so much great information and I know people are gonna just start reaching out by the thousands to you. So we wanna thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are now going to hear from Congresswoman Judy Chu. Hello, and thank you so much for inviting me to join you today. I'm Congressmember Judy Chu, and as a member of the House Small Business Committee, I'm so happy to be here today to discuss the opportunities available to small businesses. As we move past the pandemic and work to create a robust economic recovery for everyone, I want to thank the Small Business Administration and Public Private Strategies Institute for all they're doing to support the small businesses that will make an inclusive recovery possible. And I especially want to thank all of you for taking part today to understand what resources exist to help you grow our economy. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy and there won't be any economic recovery without you. That is why I have been committed to helping firms like yours survive the pandemic and overcome the unprecedented burden that you have shouldered for our country. That began last March when small businesses were the first to begin feeling the impacts of this crisis. As the coronavirus was just beginning to take a hold, in the United States, I sponsored legislation 
to extend the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or EIDL, to businesses who are seeing revenue losses as a result of the pandemic. But as we would soon realize, that was just the start. That is why Congress also created the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, which was established through the CARES Act. This historic program provided $800 billion in forgivable loans to businesses and nonprofits. This funding helped businesses to stay open and keep their employees on the payroll, even when public health restrictions meant they had to drastically reduce capacity or in some cases, close their doors entirely. But there was a problem. Too many PPP loans went to the biggest eligible businesses that had pre-existing relationships with major banks. That is why we changed the lending parameters to create a $60 billion set aside specifically for community financial institutions and small lenders to ensure that underserved small businesses could have equitable access to these desperately needed funds. These smaller institutions are more likely to have relationships with minority owned small businesses and more likely to provide access to capital for these communities. I'm pleased to say that the strategy worked. In fact, the smallest banks and lenders eligible for these set asides have now processed the majority of PPP loans and total dollars. And thanks to the American Rescue Plan, President Biden's historic $1.9 trillion relief bill, businesses have seen major stimulus and growth opportunities as we finally begin to turn the corner on the pandemic. More entities were made eligible for PPP. More businesses received idle advance grants that do not need to be paid back. Underserved communities have been proactively connected to opportunities for assistance and restaurants and bars were provided with a historic new grant program, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Now it's time to start turning our focus on how we can rebuild. And that is what precisely President Biden has proposed with the American Jobs Plan, which will make needed investments in infrastructure to help get our country back to work. For instance, when we build a new train station, that means more people, more commerce, more storefronts and more jobs. And as a member of the powerful House Ways and Means Committee, which is jurisdiction over many aspects of the American Jobs Plan, I will have a front row seat in the negotiations to craft this bill. And so some of my priorities are making sure that the final plan will include provisions I know can help small businesses. This includes creating a nationwide network of small business incubators and innovation hubs to make it easier than ever to start a business. I'm also working on helping inventors commercialize their technologies, expanding the Small Business Administration's existing capital access and investment programs like 7A, and ensuring that small firms are included in the federal contracting opportunities that will be a big part in our infrastructure investments. And by investing over $100 billion in nationwide broadband coverage, no small business will be forced to struggle just because they do not have access to high-speed, affordable internet. Just like our COVID-19 response, these new investments will only succeed if we support small businesses in accessing the resources and programs available to them. That is why I'm so grateful to the SBA, its regional offices, and its resource partners. These dedicated public servants are available to guide small businesses through the process, ensuring that they have the counsel and expertise to navigate a challenging and competitive marketplace to not only survive the crisis, but thrive and grow as we reopen our economy. So thank you to SBA and the Public Private Strategies Institute for organizing this important webinar and to all the small businesses participating today. I look forward to working together as we rebuild and make the small business economy stronger than ever. Hello.
Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we know that there may be some still questions. Uh, if you do, please email them if they're SBA related to answerdesk at sba.gov. Uh, and if you have questions about the webinar uh, and a copy of it, we are going to email those who registered. Um, so you will receive a copy of the recording um, tomorrow via email. But if you would like and you, you're not registered, go ahead and go email us at events at publicprivatestrategies.com. Additionally, this webinar is in a series of getting back on track. Uh, our next webinar will take place on Thursday, July 8th uh, at 2 p.m. Um, and it will be focused on the New England region, uh, which is Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Uh, and you can go to publicprivatestrategies.com um, <clears throat> and you'll be able to find the registration uh, page there and see the remaining webinars in the series. Again, we want to thank you so much. We want to thank our interpreters. We would like to thank Don. We would like to thank Congresswoman Chu, the SBA and Public Private Strategies Institute uh, so much for, for, for being here today. And we'd like to most importantly thank all of you small business uh, owners today for attending. Uh, we know that many of you are, are running businesses and took time out to be here with us today. So thank you so much for sharing this hour with us. And with that, uh, we bid you adieu. Have a great day.